Hi everyone, welcome to the Blender for Motion Graphic Artists video tutorial. This is episode one, and in this episode we are going to talk about navigating in Blender. So, Blender has a very unique navigation and a very unique interface that, as everyone says, and it is true, becomes insanely efficient after you get used to it, but getting used to it is the is the part that takes a little bit of practice. So, in this episode, we're just going to go over really just navigating, getting around in, in Blender. First thing you should know about Blender, well, first thing you know, should know about this cast is that in the lower left corner here of the main window, the main 3D view, you'll see in yellow letters a description of everything that I click. So, regardless of what I'm clicking or pressing on the keyboard, you'll see it echoed there on the left. So keep your eye over there if you if I, if I'm speaking too fast or or if I forget to mention what I'm doing or if you ever just need reinforcement for something. So um this is kind of the default view typically of of Blender if you've ever opened it this is what you see probably the last thing you see because you probably quit shortly thereafter. Turns out grabbing onto things in Blender is not that hard. It's just exactly the opposite of what you think it should be. Of course, traditionally, we've been trained on computers to left-click, drag, and drop. Blender, that's not how you do it. It's a right-click. You don't drag. You hit G for grab, and then you can just move your mouse around, and the, the object, whatever you've grabbed hold of, moves around with you. Now to drop it, again, it's the left mouse. So the flow of a lot of the actions you're going to do in Blender is a right click, some keyboard shortcut of, of some sort, and we'll just kind of stick with G mostly right now, and then left click to drop. Doesn't matter what it is, it can be a cube, it can be a camera, it can be a light, it can be anything. That's the, that's the sequence. In 3D space, it gets really, really kind of confusing to, to figure out where everything is in relation to each other. So from this view, for instance, it might look that that look like that cube is right in front of that camera, right? Looks, com I mean, we know it is because we've seen it from a different angle. Actually, it's pretty close, but not exact. So to get things exactly where you want them to be, it very, very frequently means that you need to rotate around. And we're still not really there, as you can see. We, we, it still looks like that camera's probably pointing at a weird angle there. So the first thing to, to know about this is that you can rotate in any direction. You can move around this stage, as it were, from any, to, to get a viewpoint from, from anywhere. And the way that you do it, if you've been watching the left corner of the screen, you already know, is the middle mouse button. And in this case, you don't click and grab. It's just a click and hold, and you drag it around with the middle mouse button. On Linux, uh, if you've got a three-button mouse, it should be working for you out of the box. If you're on a Mac, uh, you'll probably have to go to System Preferences and configure your mouse so that your mouse recognizes that a middle click is a third mouse button. On Windows, I, I believe... As long as you've got the driver installed or whatever, uh, it, it should pretty much work out of the box as well. So, um, part of the thing to know about navigating in Blender is to know that you're going to have to move your, your your world around. You need to move around your little set here quite frequently. And like I say, one way is the middle mouse button. Uh, sometimes you might want to zoom out for a better view, and that's the wheel, mouse wheel, down, or back in, close-up view, and that's the mouse upward, uh, the middle mouse uh, wheel upward. You can also move the stage around. So we, we're moving around the stage right now. You can also um, grab hold of sort of the world itself and move it. So if I hit shift, mouse button, middle mouse uh, click, then I can actually move that stage. And again, as, as you start 
kind of moving around objects and really trying to fine-tune things, you'll find yourself doing this a little bit more. Although, to be honest, unless you're doing heavy 3D modeling, I don't think you'll find yourself doing that all the time. But it is still something very important to know, because there will be times where you need to make minor adjustments, and you kind of have to zoom in or, or move yourself around the objects that you've set up. So right now we've still got this issue of this cube and that camera not exactly being in the same, uh, you know, not really facing each other. And we can kind of tell that no matter what, well, kind of from some, I guess from some different angles, you can tell because there is this grid pattern. And we can see that the cube is along this grid line and the camera's kind of askew. Turns out that you can move things along axis, axis, axes in Blender. You can constrain movement along different axes by hitting whatever axis you want to constrain the movement to. So the X axis is labeled with a red arrow. It's this guy right there. The green arrow is the Y axis. And the blue arrow is the Z axis. Okay, so you're probably wondering how I'm managing to do that. And a uh, little secret of Blender is that you can actually grab hold of those arrows with the left mouse button and drag it around. I find that fairly uncharacteristic of the rest of Blender, but in 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 just in that case, pretty much, that seems to be a very traditional kind of movement and clicking and dragging. It's very traditional. Just left click, drag, and drop. It's completely what you'd be used to on any computer system. You can also do it in the, the very traditional Blender sense, and this is kind of typically how I find myself doing it more often, and that is to right click on the object, hit the G key to grab it, and then, for instance, the Y key to kind of lock it into that axis, and then drop it with the left mouse button. Or I could have done the G and the X. So it's grabbed, it's it's clicked right now on my right on my right mouse button. G X constrains it just to the X axis. And obviously the same thing uh, for the Z axis. So that's the more or at least I think of that as a more traditional blenderish way of moving it along one axis. But you can also just cheat left click on the arrow and move it around. So it's good to know. So um, if we grab our camera and kind of move it more in line with that with that cube, and once again you kind of see the problem here with this 3D space thing. It again it kind of looks like the camera and the cube are pretty much in the same place, and yet if you look at it from another angle, you realize they're completely on a different plane. But again, that's kind of what this grid is for. It's kind of supposed to help you figure out where everything is in relation to each other. And I'll show you different tricks for that in later episodes. But right now we'll just kind of go with something that's good enough. So we've, we're, we're pretty much lined up here, I think. I feel like we're pretty good camera in the cube here. But the camera's kind of pointing off into the wrong direction. Maybe we want the camera to point exactly at that cube. Well, that would be a rotate. Rotating causes an object to rotate at its pivot point, which is kind of the intersection of all the axes, it rotates along that pivot point as if though a certain axis was, um, I, I, I think of it like as a pole or something that, that this object is kind of clamped to. So if we want to rotate it left and right, for instance, in this scenario, we would want to rotate it along the Z axis. And you'll see what I mean. I'll zoom in a little bit and move out with my shift middle click. So I've got my camera. I'm going to hit R for rotate and Z to constrain it to the Z axis. So R and then Z. And then you can see that I'm kind of moving it left and right. And I'd say that looked pretty good. That that looks pretty pretty dead on to me. Now maybe um, if you look at it from this direction, that's, that's still pretty good. And, and honestly, that's probably about right. But what if we'd... What if we'd moved our cube up all of a sudden, and we decided that the camera is no longer looking at the cube. It's kind of staring down, and the cube's way up there. So we'd want to rotate the camera upward, or, or in other words, we would want to tilt it. So that, in this case, would be rotating along the y-axis. 
So R, Y. And you can see how we can tilt it up. So we'll do that. That's about right. And there are ways, of course, to see, actually to see through your camera and see exactly what you're, you're looking at and stuff like that. But we're not going to worry about that quite yet. Uh, one more thing that you can do, and you have to be kind of careful with this one because it, it, it really starts to deceive you in certain situations, but it's a resize tool. So if I grab, or if I select an object rather and hit S, then I can resize it up or down. And I say you kind of have to be careful because we're in 3D space now. So if something appears quite large to, to your eye, you might think that that object is a lot closer in 3D space than it actually is. For instance, if we, if we grab this camera and put it right up next to the cube, that gives us one view of, of this world. And now I've just shrunk the cube, and it looks like the cube has, has, has receded into the background, right? But of course it hasn't. It's just gotten smaller. It's, it's the same distance, essentially. At least the origin point is the same distance from the camera as it always has been. It's just that I made it larger or smaller. And a lot of times if you're, if you're dealing with, with 3D space, you mistake shrinking an object for actually grabbing a hold of that object and moving it back, which essentially has the same effect to your eye from a certain angle and a very different effect from a different angle. So resizing is a little bit tricky sometimes. I don't tend to use it except on lighting because lighting is affected. Intensity of light is affected by the, the S resizing tool. But we'll get into that um, in the second or third episode. So I think third episode, actually. Possibly fourth. Um, so that's the basic movement in Blender. And honestly, that's that's about probably enough for one episode. Uh, certainly it's enough, I think, to get you practicing. Um, just remember that selecting things is the right mouse button. Grabbing them and kind of tying them to your mouse cursor is the G key. You can constrain your movements to certain axes, axis, psi, uh, by selecting the G key and then whatever axis you want to move it along. It doesn't really matter what object it is, you can pretty much do that. And that's always really good to do because actually as you've just seen, I mean I'm trying to get that cube in front of the, the camera again, and I'm moving it sort of in the way that the two-dimensional space I think I should be moving it and yet you can see that it's still completely off center. And so the way that I would want to do that in, you know, knowing what I know now is simply to say G and then Y and then I can move it back in in 3D space. And I did it a little bit too far back there, but you get the idea. You have to really think in sort of three dimensions. Speaking of three dimensions, remember that the X and the Y and the Z axes we I think we tend to have a certain kind of preconception of what that means and I think normally speaking you'd have the X as your horizontal your Y as your uh, vertical and then your Z as forward or back your vanishing point but unless you're viewing it from a certain direction you have to remember that things can be all over the place and uh, X could be, X could end up from a certain angle being coming towards you or going to your, towards your vanishing point. Yeah, 3D space can bit, get a little bit confusing if you're not really used to it, but of course it's, it's one of the most powerful features of, of Blender, and it's one of the m most powerful tools that you'll be able to use when you're designing your uh, graphic sequences in Blender. So, zooming in and out of your workspace is the mouse wheel. Moving your workspace, moving around your workspace, I should say, should say, is the middle mouse button, and moving the workspace itself is the shift middle click, uh, and moving. Remember the size, S for sizing, and R for rotating. So thank you for watching, and I will talk to you next time.